this is John Blyler. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Paul Boudra, CEO at Soitech. Thank you for taking the time for this conversation. I have uh, just a couple questions. Uh, first of all, there's been a lot of discussion or concern perhaps over the, it's a competitive question, is fully depleted planar competitive with fully depleted uh, um, FinFET? First of all, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we uh, we had these questions a lot in the field, and uh, uh, today, I mean, uh, Soitech has been able to uh, really bring two products to market to sustain the two technology. One is fully depleted uh, uh, planner, and the other one is uh, fully depleted FinFET. So, so basically, the the way we we look at it is one uh, is clearly uh, an evolution of the the current uh, planner technology. And uh, it is available starting at 28 nanometer and 20 nanometer. And uh, the, the benefit is that you can really get uh, the, the, trans the transistor capability uh, as a fully depleted uh, capability. But uh, you can uh, clearly also get a full reuse of your asset, manufacturing asset and also libraries and IPs. So, so basically, it's, a, it's an evolution towards what uh, uh, the users and consumers is looking for in terms of performance for the, for the phones. Uh, when we, we talked about, uh, uh, you know, a smartphone's capability. And uh, it, it, can, it can be uh, really uh, demonstrated already because we had already, I mean, product, uh, including application processor and modem built on this technology with uh, uh, tremendous performance. We were talking about 2.5 to 3 gig in terms of performance, mm -hmm. and a, a, a lifetime in terms of the battery uh, expanding to five hours. So it's not competing, and the reason I say it's not competing because <coughs> FitFed is going to really bring uh, also the, the next generations of uh, uh, fully depleted devices to maybe, and what we expect, to even uh, a, a different uh, performance. But uh, we believe today that uh, uh, the, the industry um, is still um, un under the learning curve for FinFET. Uh, cost is uh, uh, clearly uh, a challenge, but, uh, and it is linked to uh, the yield capability of the technology. So FinFET will, uh, will, will happen in the coming years, but uh, uh, as uh, uh, we are all moving fast, and if we want to sustain the Moore's law today in terms of uh, cost and, and competitiveness, um, FDSY planner is clearly the, the answer and the alternative to uh, the current bulk technology starting at 28 nanometer. You had uh, mentioned recently about, um, so there have been some issues, some discussions about uh, capacity, right? I mean, you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing growth now, and the question is, well, is that, can you sustain it? Um, and I believe uh, ST now is looking at, an, uh, so they're certainly one of the folks that have been very strong in, in the, the soy manufacturing. Um, and they have an open, uh, they're looking at an open uh, foundry model. Um, could you say a few things about that? Yeah, the, the way you can really expand the technology, uh, it has to be through the, the foundry business, right? I mean, clearly the, the fabless companies have now uh, defined their model and, and uh, the way they want to, uh, to work and expand their product. So uh, what is clearly important in this uh, uh, FD, SOI, planar technology is that uh, the company was re uh, clearly enabled the technology uh, ST Microelectronic together with ST Ericsson to build uh, the phones that support this technology. Uh, ST Microelectronic uh, has decided, and it has been public, that uh, they want to really port this technology to, uh, to the foundries. And uh, Global Foundry has been the first one to, uh, to respond, and we are looking for more. And uh, clearly, there is no, cha no change at all now in, in the supply chain. Fabless are talking to the foundry, and foundry are talking to, uh, to the uh, suppliers, material suppliers. And just one word on that, I mean, Soitech has been leading for this technology in terms of uh, uh, creating the product. But we have also uh, really looked at uh, how do we how do we bring our competitors, but also partners, in a way, uh, to this technology? So now there is uh, three companies, uh, SCH, MEMC, and Soitec, who are capable to deliver this product. One final question, and this is in the, uh, the RF space, where you've been playing a, a strong role. As a matter of fact, I think the number is over 50% uh, of the smartphones now contain yeah. you know, your, your technology. Um, and what's the trend there? 
Yeah, it, it is a very good point, and, and you know that in a phone there is uh, uh, clearly the, the the application processor and the modem were clearly important. But how do you commu communicate with the external world? I mean, this is the RF world, and we have seen over the last two years uh, a huge transitions to um, uh, what we call HR, so I, I resistivity SOI, or bonded source um, technology that we are developing in uh, uh, at Soitech. And, and clearly what it brings to the industry, it brings uh, a lower cost technology and uh, higher performance in terms of uh, switches, for example. I mean, we have announced today uh, uh, a new performance in terms of uh, switches. And, and so ITEC is very proud to be able to not only deliver the mainstream technology for some applications, for the entire uh, RF applications, basically, but also we have the capability to uh, work with some partners, customers, and uh, develop some unique capabilities for them. It's been great talking with you. It has been great, and it's, uh, it's a fantastic event this week. Uh, it's a sunny sky in, <laughs> in, uh, in California, which is great, and uh, clearly a lot of uh, good news, and, and we are moving fast to a, a mobile transition. So